Hey everybody, Jane here, and I am filming my June TBR on June 12th because that's the kind of month it's been. So I'm doing round three of The Library Chooses My TBR. Round two went okay. There was a book that I didn't get to finish and I was planning on putting it on to June's TBR. I think I'm actually going to wait and add it on to July though, just because I'm so far into the month and reading hasn't happened. At the beginning of the month for the first week from the 1st to the 6th, we were out of town and I'd had plans to do reading while we were out of town, but that didn't go as planned. <laughs> so anyway, um, I did let the library choose my TBR again and I was really happy with their picks. I am going to show you a video of me actually going to the library. This was like the day before June, or yeah, the, the 30th, I guess it was, 30th or 31st, me going to the library to pick up my books. So you can get my reaction to what they are, and then we can delve a little more deeply into what my thoughts are now that I've had time to settle with it, and not just my initial reactions. So I'm gonna cut to that now. In here and it is kind of a windy, yucky, rainy-ish day in Ohio. It is the end of May and I am here at the um, lockers, the book pickup lockers, to get my books for my TBR for June. I wanted to bring you with me this time so you can get my like knee-jerk reaction to what they've picked for me. I got a notice that books were here. I did not look at the title, so we're all gonna be surprised together. So the way this works is I have my nifty little library card. I'm going to run my hand under the scanner to activate it. And then I put my card underneath the scanner and a door should pop open. Oh, there it is, my door. So we are in door 15, and we are going to pick up what I got. So let's see. So this is actually for my kids. It's the Swiss Family Robinson. Tessa Dare, a night to remember, or to surrender. Love Tessa Dare. I'll be gone in the dark. I've heard of this one, but I've never read it. Then we have The Sympathizer, Hyperbole and a Half, and Eight Perfect Murders. I don't know that I've ever heard of these. This one, it says, is a remarkable debut thriller and social satire. This is... Oh, it's a comic thing. Oh, I have seen these. These are fun. And then Eight Perfect Murders. I am always about the murder mysteries. All right. So I was really impressed that some of these books I'd heard of. And I am standing behind my thoughts that um, one in particular probably isn't going to be for me. I am going to give it a try. But it's one that I think I'm probably going to push to the end of the month because I'm just not feeling very interested in it. And that is The Sympathizer. Now, I've not heard anything on YouTube about this. I don't think. I think I might have thought I had, but the more I've read the back, it doesn't seem like it's something that anybody's been talking about. So the back says, the winner of the 2016 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction, compared by critics to the works of Graham Greene, Dennis Johnson and George Orwell, The Sympathizer is a blistering exploration of identity, politics, and America wrought in electric pose. The narrator, a Vietnamese army captain, is a man of divided loyalties, a half-French, half-Vietnamese communist sleeper agent in America after the end of the Vietnam War. A powerful story of love and friendship in a gripping espionage novel. The Sympathizer examines the legacy of the Vietnam War in literature, film, and the wars we fight today. So here's the thing. I am very interested in the Vietnam War and the Vietnam War era. I am not interested in espionage and spy novels. 
and I'm just really worried that this is going to be a lot closer to espionage and spy and you know thriller than what I'm interested in which would be to read about the Vietnam War and the effects that it had on on the Vietnamese people on the American people you know just I, I'm interested in this time period but this book may just not be a good match for me this is the only one though of the ones that uh, were selected for me that I'm kind of questionable about the others I'm really excited so the next one I'll show you is eight perfect murders and I just recently started uh, in a mystery group mystery reading group and they talked about this book so I'm super excited to get to read it and it says on the back it's a simple list, the most brilliant murders in fiction. The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie, Double Indemnity by James M. Kane, Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith, The Drowner by John McDonald, The Red House Mystery by A. A. Milan or Milne, Malice of Forethought by Anthony Berkeley Cox, Death Train by Ira Levine, and The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And I've read two of the three. I've read The Secret History and The Strangers on a Train. Now someone is using the list to leave a trail of corpses across New England, and the man who created the list, bookseller Malcolm Kershaw, may be next. But Mal isn't going to let that happen. The mystery expert is going to use his knowledge to find his shadow first. Eight Perfect Murders is a brilliant tale of death and deception from the new master of mystery, Peter Swanson. Uh, the mystery club that I joined said they'd, that the regular book club had read this book and really liked it, and they were going to be reading another book very soon by this author. So I'm very excited to try it. Um, obviously, mystery is one of the genres that I really enjoy reading. All right, next on our list is a true crime book, and it is... I'm not going to read the back of this one because I think it's just all the stuff that people love about it. But basically, it is a search for the Golden State Killer. I don't know much about the Golden State Killer, but I've heard a lot of people talk about this on BookTube and really enjoy it. So I'm excited to give it a try. The next book on the list is a comic, and it is from the Hyperbole and a Half series. Um, and I'm really excited to read it. I, I enjoy comic things like this that are funny. I think I've seen a few of these shared on Facebook. They, they look familiar to me. So I'm, I'm eager to give this a try. Uh, this summer is probably going to be a little rough, and I've been wanting some light reading, some fun reading, some comedy. And I'm hoping this kind of gives me that, even if it's a little more on the darker side of humor. Um, the reason we were on that trip because I think it's relevant to my mood, is uh, my kids stay with their dad during the summer. And I am so glad that they get the opportunity to do that. But summers tend to be a little hard for me because I miss them. <laughs> and when you're a mom whose whole life is about your kids, what do you do when they're not there? The last book that the library chose for me is A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. I'm going to read the back of this. <clears throat> Spindle Cove is the destination of choice for certain types of well-bred young ladies, the painfully shy, young, young wives disenchanted with matrimony, and young girls too enchanted with the wrong men. Victor Bramwell, the new Earl of Rycliffe, knows he doesn't belong here. There's nothing in this place but spinsters and sheep. But he has no choice. He has orders to gather a militia. It's a simple mission made complicated by the spirited, exquisite Susanna Finch, a woman who's determined to save her personal utopia from the invasion of Bram's makeshift army. This is book one in the Spindle Cove series. I have read a novella that takes place in Spindle Cove, and the last book in the Castles, uh, the Castle series by Tessa Dare also was a crossover with Spindle Cove. So I actually have been really wanting to read book one in the Spindle Cove, and I just haven't yet. I downloaded it onto my MP3 player months ago and just haven't gotten around to it. So I'm actually super excited about this one and getting into the Spindle Cove series since I've already read some tie-in stuff and enjoyed it. So that is what the library picked for me and I do plan to read as much as I can this month. However, <laughs> um, I'm actually in the middle of two books right now that 
I started this month and I'm going to continue. The one I don't expect to finish this month is an audiobook, and that book is Outlander. I don't really know what Outlander is about. Um, my best friend read it recently and absolutely loved it and told me I really need to read it and that I will love it. I'm about a chapter and a half in. I'm doing the audiobook and it's going to be my traveling book because I've got a lot of places I'm going this summer. So while I'm in the car, I'm going to try to listen to it, but it's about 30 hours long, I do believe. So not as long as it was, but still long enough that I'm not going to get finished with it in June, but I'm going to work on it a little at a time and hopefully eventually get through it so that me and my friend can talk about it. The last book that I'm reading, and I am enjoying it quite a bit, is Thunderhead. By the way, this was, if you saw the video, the um, bookmark that the library gave this month. It is a book a day keeps reality away, and I am using it just not for the books the library sent me. Um, I'm using it on Thunderhead. So I think it was November that I read, or maybe it was December. I read, <laughs> I read Scythe last year, I think, and I enjoyed it. I hadn't gotten around to Thunderhead. I kept saying I was going to, saying I was going to, but Scythe felt pretty complete to me. And I just wasn't seeing a reason to pick Thunderhead up when I didn't have any real unanswered questions from Scythe. I was happy with it. It was a fun book. I really enjoyed it. I think it was a four star for me, but it just, I wasn't feeling like I needed to pick up book two. So my brother read it and my best friend read it and they said, no, go ahead and pick it up. You'll, you'll enjoy it. It's, it's not like Scythe. And you might not enjoy it as much as you enjoyed Scythe, but you'll probably have a good time with it. And so far, I'm about halfway through, and that has been the case. Um, it is a very different focus. So book one is a, well, the whole series is about a dystopian where people no longer die. And book one focus die naturally. And book one focuses on the Scythedom. And the Scythedom are a group of people who are in charge of killing people to control the population. And they don't kill very many people. Each Scythe has a quota of how many people they have to kill. But it's a fairly small number. However, it's such a huge responsibility. We uh, follow two apprentice Scythes who are, you know, hoping to become Scythes at the end of the book and learn how to do their job the way it should be done, with respect, without malice, following the rules of the Scythe. Book two is much less about the Scythedom and much more about the Thunderhead. The Thunderhead is this computer that controls the dystopian world, and its big job is to make sure that everything is taken care of, that humans are fed and, you know, pollution is limited, and it, it's, it's a very wise, wise computer that also is problematic in so many ways. And the only thing that the Thunderhead does not have any um, power over is the Scythedom. That there's a separation of Scythe and Thunderhead so that the Scythes can do their gleaning and the Thunderhead can just kind of be like, okay, yeah, that's what you gotta do because I don't wanna interfere because I'm not an immortal being in killing people. It's, it's a complicated thing. But this, uh, this one very much focuses on the Thunderhead. It is interesting. Right now it is a four star read for me also, but I definitely feel like it's a lot different than Scythe. So those are all the books that I have read or intend on reading. I am part of a mystery club at my library and they have chosen next month's book. And I'm not sure when it will come, and I'm not sure if I'm going to start reading it this month or next. And that book is Sworn to Silence. I don't know much about it other than the author is an Ohio, used to live in Ohio, 
and I believe the mystery takes place in part in Ohio and it involves the Amish community. Like I said, I don't know when that book will come in. I don't know if I'll read it in June or July, but the book club meeting is the second Thursday of the month. So I'm probably, if it comes in in June, because I'm on a wait list, um, I'll have to, to jump on that and get it read. So yeah, those are my reads for the month. Please let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought. Um, if you would like, please tell me what you are reading this month and how that reading month is going for you. Do you expect to have a really great month or is it, you know, summer and there's a lot going on and maybe reading is not your highest priority this month? That would be me. <laughs> I think it's going to be a huge challenge to get through these books, but I am going to try. Uh, also, my social media is below, as is a list of the books I have written if you have any interest in checking me out as an author. This has been Jane. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.